Okay, hi everyone. I'm Pleasance. And this might be Sharon. I'm Sharon. And we are co facilitating a group on the this way. Yay! So Sharon's book looks like that. My book looks like this. I don't know which version you'll have, but I know a lot of you have it because I keep getting emails. That book has been in my in my bookshelf for 20 years, for 10 years. I got an email yesterday from a woman who said she used it five years ago in her transition from full-time career to full-time writer. I got an email from a friend who said she used it um, as in her transition from a marketing professional to owning her own business. Um, I have received lots of information on how this book and the questions and the explorations on creativity and spirituality and self-love and connection have changed people's lives. And I invited Sharon to join in our circle. Sharon, can you talk a little bit about your experience with this beautiful book? Yes, I love this book. Oh, and that's my cat's tail, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I joined um, Pleasance's um, The Artist's Way group last last summer, I guess, last summer in June uh, 2018, and it has just been such an amazing experience. I had never been, I'd never like journaled, and I completely um, embraced the morning pages, the three-page daily practice that has become, I'm like a day 450 now of writing ev wow. every single day. And it's just, it's easy and it's fun and it's interesting. Um, anyway, I, I, can, I can talk about, answer anybody's questions about the morning pages, but, um, and the, the experience of going through the book with a group is really, really powerful. Um, I had tried doing it by myself probably 20 or 25 years ago when it first came out. Um, and yeah, it faded, you know, I did like one or two weeks and then, and then it dropped, but having the community experience was really wonderful. And that was in uh, Facebook, which is, you know, I don't really like being on Facebook, but with Mighty, it's going to be so fun. It's Mighty is going to let us just create and explore. It's such a great container and way for communicating and sharing content and experiences. And I'm really excited about um, the community, how we're going to build community. So hope everybody who sees this might join us. Did you write before? I can't remember. Nope. Were you journaling before? Nope. So writing uh, morning pages was a real um big part for you a big takeaway i know that there are lots of people who've moved through the questions and explorations and artist dates and self-discovery in the book that never took to the morning pages because oh. they didn't have time to do it in the morning and so just one of the things i like to always work with is like you know julia cameron is a visionary and a leader in the community of integrating spirituality and creativity and self-development and self-growth um, for sure. Um, but she also, so she creates this, this container for us to learn and grow and explore from, but it's not so rigid where if you don't do three pages, you're out, right? Like, oh, you don't do this. And so I, what I love about using this book as we're all exploring our feminine practices, and that's males and females, right? The unknown, the inner landscape, all of this language that's so fun to even think about, is that there's so many ways that we can start to add this kind of reflection and these kind of practices. I know some people who've taken to doing morning pages at lunch, right? And, it's, and, it, and they just made a habit of leaving their desk at lunch every day and writing three pages. And that is how they brought it in. Or at night before they went to bed, writing one page. Um, I know people who've moved through the book who didn't do any morning pages <laughs> the first time, right? Yeah. And I actually am a writer, so I don't do morning pages. Like I, I write every morning, but I don't call it morning pages and write three pages and be done with it. Like, so again, just kind of the vast openness that the, the thing that this book really has brought to my life, to your life, to our community is sense of community, purpose, meaning, intention, mm. really good questions 
that are so good. <laughs> so relevant. The chapter on perfectionism blew, blows my mind because I work with women all the time around perfectionism. Here's 25 years later, we're still talking about it in some of these ways. And we are, instead of doing it in isolation, doing it together helps us. The good news is that we know from research that group groups create transformation that's in a, in a faster pace and at a deeper, longer impact on your life than doing something alone, right? We're wired for connectivity. We're wired for community. Exactly. So to partner this work with a community, which is mighty, as Sharon was saying, that's our online community that we found that's away from Facebook. It's a really beautiful integration. And so the Artist Way is part of the Lola community. It's part of the Lola um, it's part of our Lola offerings as, as a signature offering of this, this beautiful text to bring it to life and to, um, it's really for everybody. There's really nobody who it's, who it's like, nope, oh, that's not for you. <laughs> um, any other sort of takeaways that you have, Sharon, or you've had with it or invitations that you want people to know? Yeah, thank you. Um, just also the artist date. I mean, as a takeaway, at the first time that I did it, I thought the artist date, I don't know, it was like it had to be like going to a museum or doing something really special and, and, and important, significant, until I realized that the artist date is just something that I would normally, instead of calling Pleasance up and saying, hey, P, you want to come with me and like do this thing? It's like, oh, wait, I'm just going to take myself. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of making almost an everyday thing sacred, like going to, I live close to the National Cathedral. And so I did a bunch of artist dates, just taking myself to the cathedral, to the Bishop's Garden, um, to Open City and going for a walk or sitting and journaling or reading or drawing. Um, but that idea of calling it a date, just calling it a date with your inner artist, with yourself, um, just, has made and it makes things doing things by myself like woo <laughs> so special like a date it is like a date I and know. <laughs> you know it's like cultivating that your your sense of your own being your own best friend and you know that putting your own mask on first taking care of your you know feeling good um, and then and then what was the other thing was oh like you said the questions the questions are they're so fun at some of, I mean, there can be, some of them are challenging, but the process of thinking about your childhood bedroom and what did you want to be when you were a little kid and what are, you know, the good thing and approaching things from the positive and the negative and the past and the future um, is just so, and some questions will, you know, respond. I mean, for me, there were some questions that I responded to, and some questions I was like, "eh," <laughs> you know, it's like, not, not, you know, not, uh, not just now. not right now, yeah. Um, so, and then just like you said, there's no, there's no right way to do it. It's just, it's all creative exploration, and you can be super creative in, in how you participate. Yeah. There's no, yeah. Yeah, that's, I, you know, again, just when I think about sort of the world that we live in and what really matters and how, you know, a lot of people are lip service around wanting to create these lives with value and meaning and purpose, but work is taking them over or family or relationships. And so doing this kind of project for 12 weeks, right, this kind of exploration for 12 weeks is a way to really look at and integrate how to bring those values into your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we think about, I love the, the visual of the dates and talking about that as like how we become our own best friend, because one of the biggest blocks that people have is around self-critic, right? Inner critic and not being kind to themselves and not treating themselves with care and love the way they would other people that they do love. And I remember the first time that I did the artist way. I told my family, oh, I'm going out for dinner. And I just said, with a friend. And I wasn't. And I wasn't alone. And, was <laughs> and I didn't want to tell you. It wasn't anything that Mel would have said or the kids. I just didn't want to tell anybody. I just wanted to go alone. I brought a book. 
I went to an Indian restaurant in a different neighborhood that I never would go to. And I sat and I was like table for one. And I sat at my table for one. I ordered all the food I wanted to eat. I had my book. And I remember pulling out my phone and taking a picture of my dinner and posting it to the community on the first time that I ever did this and saying like, I've never been so happy. Like I was just so happy. And part of it was the experience I was having. And part of it was sharing it with people who were like rooting me on to say that matters. Like you matter. You get to have joy and a date with yourself. That was probably five or six years ago. So many years later now, I just, this is part of my life is treating myself with care and taking myself out and being kind to myself. And I am, I, I've really started to enjoy my own company. And when people say, where did it start or how did that start? How do you start to become your own best friend? It's by little teeny tiny actions, right? Just like any other relationship, right? If you're dating someone new, do you ignore them or do you ask them questions and start to get to know who they are and listen to what they need and take care of that? And so I love that has been the biggest impact for me is being able to have that deep, those, those dates and care that became part of how I live and showing that to my kids and living that way. And also my husband, um, he's a big fan of me being independent. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> um, he's very independent too. But the point is that like, when we're talking about change, when we're talking about society, when we're talking about a lot of the pain and suffering that's happening in our world, um, some of these little teeny tiny tangible little things really can make all the difference of how we show up in our lives, how we heal ourselves, how we work with other people. And, and it's fun along the way. So I, I think that there's so many incredible things that may open for your life and you will probably experience some tension and tightness and tears and discomfort and emotions and having this container to hold together all of us in that is just, it's beautiful. It's and I love that we're going to be able to have the meet and greet and that we might, I know I'm, I might volunteer for doing some in real life, bringing, inviting people down to the cathedral, to the Bishop's Garden to share my favorite place in the city. Yeah. Um, I love orienting people to, because it's a hidden treasure that lots of people don't know secret parts about. Um, and just how fun it is to share in the joys and the sorrows and the discoveries and the insights and that we're going to get to know whether we ever meet in person or whether they're people who we just see it, you know, we just see online and yeah. And just to think about for people that it really, the more, the more you put in, the more you get, well, my experience is the more you put in, you, the more you, you get out, but there are people who just watch and, and read stuff and never participate and they get lots out of it too. So you don't have to, I love that, we don't have to make a big commitment or investment or participation, but it's there in the container and the safe space to share joys and sorrows, um, but mostly joys. <laughs> so, um, and the structure is that each week we're going to have conversations. Anyone is welcome to join us who's on our, who's on the live call. And we are going to talk about the chapter of the week or the topic or the theme of the week kind of giving a little bit of a preview and exploring the depth of the content for that week before um, the reading of that week. Once we get into the juice of it, three or four weeks in, there'll be a natural flow from past content moving into future. And um, it just always works out sort of organically and authentically for exactly what we all need in our life at that time. But um, we will be going over some of the explorations and the questions and the content in our real lives, um, like uh, group coaching, group mentoring, group sharing, um, and then moving into sort of what the next weeks are. So there is content. It's not just Sharon and I chit chatting away, although that would be super fun too. <laughs> um, or I think it would. <laughs> um, so the 12 weeks is mapped out and we really kind of stick to that for each call. And then as usual, anything pops up, artist dates, uh, other calls, people, it, it's, I'm always surprised by what comes up during our circles. So um, this is an invitation to join us now or in the future or pick, make sure to pick up the book for yourself and um, do your deep dive. So thank you, Sharon, for joining me in this conversation and circle this fall. And thank you, Julia Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
which is still so relevant, which we can still use and is such a gift to our lives. So thanks everyone. Bye.